Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, May 14th to Saturday, May 20th. Okay, so last week we had Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, work, pleasure, money, moving into cancer energy, bringing up all the feels. And of course, after months, well, let's say weeks, it felt like months of having Venus kind of take up our mental plane space in that Gemini energy, really confusing us, really putting us in situations to have to decide from very, very extreme options, especially where making some major changes to our physical realm, to our routines, to our relationships, to our money matters were concerned. We were definitely back and forth and back and forth. We didn't seem to come to much resolution. Now in this cancer energy, we're taking those ideas down into the heart space. We really have to feel it in order to gauge whether or not we have to heal it or we have to grow through it and make something out of some of these realizations, some of these epiphanies. Well, what are we focused on? We're focused on our basic needs on where it is that we don't feel safe and secure and stable in our lives, whether that be in our physical circumstances, whether that be in our relationships and our money matters, or just in the practice of taking care of ourselves, we have to make some changes. We have to get back to our roots. We have to get back to our basic foundation of taking care of ourselves. And because Venus is in this cancer energy, we have a lot of inner child mother wounds coming up, which I kind of spoke briefly about last week, But as we're kind of moving into the weekend where the majority of people are celebrating Mother's Day, this should definitely be an emotional one. We'll talk about that in just a second. Of course, we had the sun and Uranus kind of pop off. They had their annual meetup. The sun shining a bright light on shock, on surprise, on unexpected events. We had to kind of roll with the punches. We get a little bit of disruption in our lives. That was the pivot point for us, especially being in this eclipse season, in this retrograde season, that was the pivotal point that we're kind of retracting from looking back. We are kind of positioning ourselves in the here and now, and we are very, very, very focused now on where it is that we're going from here. That sun and Uranian energy is a lot of electricity. And of course, we've seen that kind of be mirrored back on the Schumann residence with some of those solar flares, those CMEs popping off. And of course, it always aligns with the astrology going on in the cosmos. That's that electromagnetic frequency kind of shifting, moving, altering the space above and therefore applying a little bit more pressure to some of the other planets and those planets pop off with their own electromagnetic frequencies that of course we feel on so many different levels. We are successfully closing the door on the very last week of Mercury being retrograde. Thank freaking goodness. I don't know about y'all, but Mercury tried to come for me this week, kind of packing all three weeks of disturbances into pretty much three days. May might kind of rant about that here in a second, but I am very happy for one that Mercury retrograde is coming to an end. And of course, as I speak to you here on Friday evening, the 12th, we had our last quarter moon take place in Aquarius energy early this morning which always creates a little bit of an intensity, a little bit of a wake up, a little bit of a shake up, because the last quarter moon is all about reflecting back over this last lunar cycle. So we got to go back about a month and really kind of sort through all that has taken place, all that has transpired. We're kind of plucking out the silver linings. We're sorting out our thoughts, sorting out our feelings. We are kind of determining what needs to stay, what needs to go. We are kind of strategizing on tying up loose ends, providing a closure and ending of chapter. And of course, in this Aquarian energy, we are emotionally detached from our circumstances as much as possible, which is a great thing, especially seeing as Venus and Cancer is pushing us all the way into those waters watery depths of our emotional field. The Aquarian energy provides us with the observer mentality so that we can see all the working pieces, if you will, kind of coming together, which ones are working, which ones aren't working. We are taking a bird's eye view of the circumstances that have basically been forced upon us, changing, shifting, altering, recalibrating through this retrograde and eclipse season. And we are really starting to see a new path, a new direction emerge, even if it's not kind of confirmed with the details being put in place and having a calculated strategy, we definitely know what we're not going back to. We definitely know what what it is that we're done with. 
We definitely know what it is that we're over. And from that, we should be creating a framework, a plan, a strategy to actually move on, to actually move forward. So this week, what do we got going on? We have Mercury going direct on the 14th on Sunday. That's definitely going to bring a different perspective into light. We have Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, moving out of that Aries energy into Taurus energy. We'll talk about that in just a second. That is a major, major shift for us to kind of experience. And we are building towards the new moon in Taurus on the 19th. That is definitely going to bring all of the pieces, mind, body, and soul that has been very disconnected over the last couple of weeks. I'm going to bring them all together, shove us back into our physical body, get us anchored in, get us grounded into our new physical form, into our new physical realm, physical circumstances. Of course, there's been a lot of moving parts since eclipse season and retrograde season kind of collided and overlapped. And we are definitely going to be taking a good look at ourselves and our realities from a different set of eyes. Lastly, we have Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, moving out of cancer energy, which will be a very positive shift into Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. This is going to be such a beautiful time for all of us. First of all, it is a fire energy and Mars, who is used to ruling over Aries energy, the very first fire sign of the Zodiac, very comfortable in fire energy. Why is that? Well, because we get to take action. We get to initiate. We get to have a spark, a fire, a flame be reignited within us once again. And we actually get to figure out what it is that we're excited about, what we're inspired about, what we're motivated to actually pursue. It all comes down to that heart chakra. It all comes down to what makes us happy and what it is that we have to do in order to fulfill this desire for a new meaning, a new mission, a new purpose. One other notable mention that I want to just bring up, and we will probably touch on this multiple times over the next week. When Jupiter moves into this Taurus energy, and again, he's at the tail end of this Aries energy as of right now, and we're already kind of within orb. And again, within orb means that a, a specific amount of degrees with another aspect, with another planet. But when we have Jupiter actually move into this Taurus energy at a zero degree, He's going to be squaring off, getting into the boxing ring with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is retrograde, but at the zero degree in Aquarian energy. So for my, I'm going to say VIPs, for those of you who have kind of, you know, been downloading all the content, listening to all the forecasts, for those of you who get my one-on-one -on -one private forecasts, this is what I've been talking about. This is going to create tension. This is going to create an urgency, an emergency, a crisis point, a feeling like we have to decide, feeling like we have to choose, feeling like we have to commit to something, and it's not the best time to do it. It's going to be very, very hard to hold off until the very first week of June. Um, ideally June 11th before we make any of those decisions it's going to be very hard to resist that urgency that crisis point that temptation to pull the trigger on something but we're going to have a lot of turbulence with Jupiter and Pluto so tight in this square and it will take us up until pretty much the first week of June in order for these guys to kind of loosen their grip on each other but it's a little bit of a cluster F because we have Jupiter who is about growth and expansion, really pushing the boundaries of our comfort zone. And especially in a new energy, we always need a little bit of time to adjust to what, you know, we are going to be learning, if you will, over this next year that Jupiter will be in Taurus energy. And again, reminder, you know, it hasn't been in Taurus energy for 12 years. That's Jupiter's orbit. That's Jupiter's cycle. So he's pushing for us to grow. He's pushing for us to expand our mind space, our heart space, our belief on what possible. He wants us to expand the boundaries of our comfort zones on the opportunities to build and create something new. But you also have Pluto, who is pushing for change, pushing for transformation, but he's retrograde right now. So we're moving inward to kind of take a good look at our limitations in our mental blockages, in our emotions, in our attachments to the old. It's very much 
I'm going to say not totally similar as the Jupiter and Saturn uh, back and forth conjunction of like 2020 to 2021. It was that back and forth accordion where it was like one step forward, two steps back, two steps forward, one step back, really not going anywhere. This is a short term aspect. This is a one off. We're not going to have multiple interactions like we did with Jupiter and Saturn going through that particular aspect and alignment. This is a one off, but it's going to come hot and heavy, right? It's going to come at us in a, in a almost like a urgent crisis decision type of energy. And for us to resist that, to hold back to really kind of press pause when all of the energies are really trying to press fast forward on us, it is going to be a challenge. Now, the reason why I say, first of all, that we want to hold off till at least June and before we take action, before we align, before we commit, most of that is because, first of all, the square is super, super intense. So we're not going to be kind of thinking or feeling in a natural state, there is going to be this, you know, internalized pressure, there's going to be external pressure as well, to kind of make a change to push for, you know, new transformations, new elements being born. But even more than that, Mercury is in its post shadow period up until June 1st. And so, you know, we hit that June 1st, we're fully functioning in our mind space. We have all the information that we need to be informed, to make a well-educated decision. And that is kind of the green light go, if you will, to start, you know, taking action and, and really aligning with having to make decisions, having to commit to one path, one direction over the other. If you can make it until June 11th to do that, that would be even more beautiful because of course mercury will be moving into its place of power in gemini energy and that is just a whole lot of clarity that's a whole lot of information that's a lot of certainty yes we're still going to have to debate certain pros and cons but we'll be debating the pros and cons and being on the fence if you will um with some of the choice points kind of in the second stage of things so and not that I wanted to go on a rant about this, but here we are, so let's do it. We have been on the fence about a lot of things for many, many moons now, okay? And just when we have one energy, one aspect kind of push us to pull the trigger on something, another planet will move into a competing energy that brings up a different perspective of some of the things that we didn't first contemplate. So then, you know, we've taken one step forward, but now we're at a situation where we're like, okay, we've made that commitment. We've taken this step forward. Now we're presented with another option, another choice point, another crossroads. So we have sat on the fence about that. Um, Venus, a good, good example, Venus being in that Gemini energy had us very torn, very divided on whether or not we were content with the lives in which we've already built, especially where relationship dynamics were concerned or whether or not we thought that the grass was greener on the other side. And we were open to experimenting with that. Well, that's great. We kind of, you know, we're leaning towards one decision over the other. Venus goes ahead, dives into cancer energy in the middle of eclipse and retrograde season. So how are we supposed to think and feel clearly in alignment with our higher self, with our soul, while we have all of these competing energies really pushing us to question everything? So as we kind of see Jupiter square off with Pluto, yes, that's its own set of intensities. We still have a lot to, I'm going to say, feel and heal with Venus being in this cancer energy. Mars being in cancer energy isn't doing nothing nice for any of us. So we can't wait for Mars to get into this very straightforward, very passionate, very excitable energy of Leo. But then here we are and we're still not thinking clearly because Mercury's post shadow period. So like I keep saying, there is a pattern, a season, a cycle to all of these energies. Um, of course, you are going to be put in circumstances sometimes where, you know, you're advised maybe by myself or, you know, other spiritual advisors to hold off on a decision that you just can't hold off of. Life doesn't work like that. We don't have opportune times to just let the stars lead us. But what I'm saying is, is that if you have the opportunity to put off making those decisions, to put off making those commitments, to, you know, put a pause on having these conversations until we actually get into June's energy, that would be the best outcome. 
that would be the uh, most clarity that you're going to have, the most certainty that you're going to have with all the information and details that you need in order to make those decisions. And of course, that doesn't mean that it's fail proof that you wouldn't run into, you know, detours or ups and down details or whatever the case may be. But when you make these types of decisions, whether you choose to do it by yourself or you're pressurized to make them in cycles where the energy isn't stable, it doesn't mean that you're going to change your mind, although you could. It just means that you're going to have a bumpier ride trying to stabilize, trying to anchor in the changes that you're actually looking to make. So here's your warning. OK, we're moving into a very, very accelerated week of energies. And again, we're already kind of feeling the tension point of needing to decide, need, needing to make a decision, needing to choose something, needing to align with a path, with a decision, whatever the case may be. We're already kind of in the realm of that. And then Jupiter and Pluto are really going to add that extra layer of intensity that we have to do our best to kind of put on pause, put on the back burner and wait for the ideal time the most advantageous time, let's say, which of course is between June 1st and June 11th. So that is a little bit of a blurb on what it is that we're dealing with coming into this next week. Before we jump into the Ascension symptoms for this week, though, just want to take a minute and I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for sharing your time, your energy with me. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting. Um, as you know, I hate to bring it up every week, but a few of y'all have actually brought it to my attention this week of how bad YouTube is actually messing with my channel. So, you know, no notifications, very limited commenting. Um, nobody's really seeing my stuff anymore unless you are, you know, the hardcore OGs like most of you here are. Um, you're the ones that are specifically coming each and every day looking for my videos, looking to make that extra effort to like, to share, to comment and keeping me very much in the algorithm that I believe has been written against me at this point because my channel is just absolutely taking a beating. I had a beautiful soul just kind of remind me that you must be doing something right in order for you to be under attack by big tech like this. And that's a beautiful perspective to have. And I think it's a much better perspective for me to have because I've been kind of sitting in a lot of frustration and anger about, you know, YouTube and this whole platform and what it's doing, not only to me, but to other creators that are speaking truth as well. It can be very, very defeating. And I don't like sitting in defeat. So that message, that reminder came at a perfect time. And I thank you so much for that. You know who I'm speaking about. You know who you are uh, to remind me of that perspective, because, yeah, you're right. I, I have to be doing something right in order to undergo such an attack. Um, and it's a good reminder, not on, I'm not just talking about YouTube, but most of us here are very sensitive beings, very spiritual beings, have been activated on a mission and a path in order to bring light into this world and help the transition out of the 3D in order in order to move into that 5D. So for many of us, what I would just like to remind you is that, you know, let's call them God or the universe or the cosmos or whoever it is that you choose to choose to kind of put um, in that title, in that mind space, but they really do give the toughest lessons to the best students. And, you know, we're all here. And if you're feeling attacked, if you're feeling, you know, like you're kind of being punished or whatever, I think it's a good reminder. And I'm going to extend this reminder just as it was so gracefully extended to me. You got to be doing something right. You know, if bad things, if you feel like you're being punished, if you feel like you're being kind of kicked down, you must be doing something right. You must have a force within you that is powerful enough in order to create change, not only within your own world, but in the world around you. And that's why you're being attacked in the way that you're being attacked. And of course, that attack can come from all different angles, from all different elements. Could be your family attacking you. Maybe you're the black sheep of the family. Could be your friends kind of attacking you because, you know, you're no longer on the same vibration and frequency. You could have, you know, your mental plane, the negative uh, narratives, the, the demons, if you will, creep into that lower vibration and frequency and attack you from the inside. There are a lot of ways that you can feel attacked here in this world, but you know, you must have a light within you in order to be attacked. 
So let's just remind ourselves that we are doing something right, that we do have a light, we do have a gift, that we do have a mission, and that we are going to graduate from this earth school with the highest of honors. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, and again, uh, if you're over on Patreon, I you're going to know what I'm talking about because you've all kind of been along for the ride with me here this week. We had the sun and Uranus kind of pop off in their annual conjunction here on the 9th. And let me tell you, that's kind of when shit hit the, ha- the fan for me. Um, this week, I had some unexpected events that came out of the woodwork with no notice that put me in a situation where I had to reschedule some of my appointments this week. I struggled as hard as I could to get that astro for cl- the astro class done um, because I released those on Wednesdays. And man, like I said, Mercury retrograde came at me hard this week. I had technological issues up the yin yang. It was like back to back, like my iPad was plugged in on charge with the little lightning bolt to indicate that it was charging for close to nine hours. I unplugged it. It was like 1% increase. So that kind of ticked me off. That set me up. Had to switch up my game because normally I I do all of my um, Astro Class recordings on my iPad. Well, then the audio file was corrupt. Got that fixed. Then I tried to piece the I the all the things together to create my movies in iMovie. Well, the video needed to be done, like rendered like twice because of a corrupted file, then finally got that, then went to go upload it at a very late time in the day on Wednesday that I don't normally post my astro classes anyways. And Patreon was telling me that the media file was corrupt. So if you're on my Patreon, you would have seen that white flag post that I waved about surrendering and, you know, finally just realizing that I wasn't about to let a computer make me cry. And before I smashed all the computers that I had, I had to walk away. And nothing bothers me more than having to, I'm going to say, I look at it as a failure, right? When I create a schedule for myself, when I commit to a client appointment, hell or high water, I'm going to complete that. I'm somebody of my word. I hate disappointing people. I hate having to reschedule things. I take that as a huge, huge amount of defeat in my own perfection, in my own personal world. So for me to get to the point where I was just ready to snap, like I was ready to snap and I don't cry. I'm not really a crier. And usually, you know, when the moment hits me that I'm going to cry, it's because I'm so angry or so frustrated that I don't know what else to do. So I turn into a puddle of goo. Well, I was about to cry. I was about to have a tantrum. I was about to fall apart. I was about to have a breakdown over technology. This was Wednesday. So I finally made the post about surrendering and come to find out. And I think we could all kind of come together in a general consensus here. Mercury's retrograde this time was a freaking doozy. And I don't know about y'all, but it seemed like When it first started, it was jam packed, craziness, chaos within three days of it beginning. And then it wasn't so bad throughout the last three weeks. And then, you know, as we're anticipating right now, you know, Mercury only has about another full day of being retrograde before going direct. It feels like at the beginning and the end, the pressure is just on and everything just F's up. And I am so grateful for all y'all, especially my Patreon subscribers, because y'all just have so much patience and understanding and give me so much love and support. I think y'all probably felt me crying, you know, through the computer, just making that defeat. I surrender post like, you know, sorry, I'm going to have to reschedule. But what I'm coming to learn is that these Mercury retrogrades, whenever they happen in an earth sign, which FYI, all the Mercury retrogrades this year are taking place in earth signs. It is freaking tough. Like, I think we feel the Mercury retrograde more in Earth signs than any other sign. And it it disturbs our physical lives and it disturbs our physical realms. And especially in this Taurus energy, it just wanted us to go so slow that we were almost not even alive. And God forbid you be in a rush and God forbid you, you know, have more than two things on your to do list. It's probably going to get screwed up. Something's going to mess up. That's just the vibe that I've been getting through this particular Mercury retrograde. And yeah, 
Mercury laid it on pretty thick here on me this week, and I'm still trying to make up for lost time. I'll probably continue to do that throughout the weekend. So if you haven't received um, your reading from me thus far, if I had to reschedule, you were one of the unfortunate ones that I had to reschedule. It's coming. I promise. I haven't forgotten about you. And I successfully um, kind of, you know, accepted a certain amount of defeat and said, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to upload my astro class as a audio file this week because the media file was not working for me. So um, again, Mercury really tried to do me a, a really, really hard one here this week, and I refuse to let him win. And so therefore, I just wanted to talk about this and not only thank you all for your patience and understanding, um, but to also say that if you've been having a much harder time with this Mercury retrograde than some of the previous ones, you are not alone. It has been an absolute shit show. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about before I jumped into the Ascension symptoms, but I also feel that this is going to activate Ascension symptoms. So I feel like this is a good like transition. OK, what I want to say is that we're moving into a weekend where most people are celebrating Mother's Day. So let's talk about this for a second. Um, I think it was a couple of years ago I had done, I was really into my blog back then. I've removed my blog since then because I just can't keep up with it. But we talked about the mother wound and the mother wound always gets triggered and activated around Mother's Day for good reason. First of all, we have to understand that not everybody has a great relationship with their mother. Not everybody has a mother here. Not everybody has a living mother. Not everybody has a biological mother that they are connected to. For many people, Mother's Day is a very turbulent time because, again, it's a capitalistic day that we feel in some sense obligated to celebrate. Of course, you're going to see over the course of this weekend on social media just an outpouring of um, brown nosing and acknowledgement and gratitude. And a lot of that is just obligatory posts. They don't want to get left out. God forbid that your mother is the only mother that you didn't show out on Facebook when she's not even on Facebook, because that's just a bad look, a bad vibe. OK, so the whole social media thing just sucks you into, you know, conforming to these capitalistic holidays that whether you want to celebrate them or not, or whether you have a good relationship with your mother or not, you obviously are getting triggered in some kind of way. The mother wound runs very, very deep in pretty much every family situation because of the generational trauma that we carry in our DNA. It doesn't even necessarily need to be based off of this particular lifetime and the relationship that you have with your mother or the relationship that you have to the mother role, okay? To the nurturing role, to the motherly role. That in itself is a whole vibrational whole thing. Now, I, I I blogged about this many moons ago because for me, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to open my my arms up, open my heart up here, be a little bit transparent and talk about the fact that I hate Mother's Day. I absolutely hate it. My mother is both both my my best friend and my greatest enemy. And we've only recently just gotten to a place in our relationship where things are good where we you know can get along and it's not like this war and conflict all the time even more than that um i lost my babies you know i can't be a mom i i always wanted to be a mom i got pregnant with my twins i lost them that's how i lost my life in the midst of all of that and i'm not able to have babies so even though I've made peace with the whole situation and I've really like found myself in a new perspective and a new understanding um, in my own circumstances and, and healing that wound and filling that void, it still is a little bit of a sour point for me. 
and I try to be happy for other people and I try to just, you know, live in my own world and tell myself that everything happens for a reason and that, you know, my, my fur babies are the babies that I was meant to have. All of those things, regardless of whether they're true or not, they're things that I tell myself in order to feel good about situations like this weekend when I honestly never feel good about it. I always feel bad about it. So, of course, we're all struggling with the mother role, the mother relationship in different ways. By no means, you know, there are some people out there that that have great relationships with their mom and that are great moms and that get celebrated. And, you know, they have teas with like all of the moms and all of the grandmoms and, you know, beautiful traditions that they have in their family. And by all means, if you are one of those individuals who, you know, really embody and embrace Mother's Day as something to celebrate and something to cherish and something, you know, that that just makes you feel good. I, I commend you. I'm so happy for you. I just totally, totally am, am enthralled that you get to have that experience in this lifetime. But please also know that there is a large group of people that do not have the same experience. And those particular people are going to have a lot of triggers activate them this weekend. Even more than that, in astrology, when we talk about the mother role or family trauma or generational trauma, if you will, we talk about cancer energy. Cancer is, you know, the moon rules over cancer. That is the mother figure in the sky, the sun, of course, the father figure. Um, but the moon and the cancer energy, the fourth house is all of those motherly relationships, the family dynamics, the generational trauma, the foundation of who it is that we are. That's our root. And we have Venus, you know, the goddess of love, beauty, relationships, happiness, joy, value, worth, okay, who, who activates our heart space in a very deep, profound kind of way. She's in cancer energy. And, you know, as I kind of spoke about in the astro forecast for that, listen to it if you haven't already, but, you know, Venus in cancer energy, the main focus is getting back to the basics on what it is that we need in our physical realm, in our emotional realm, in order to feel safe and secure and stable. So to be going into a weekend where we have, again, we're in, we're still in eclipse season, okay? On Mother's Day, Mercury will come out of the retrograde and go direct, which is a very disorienting time all in itself. Um, we have all of these changing of the guards with all the planets kind of doing their thing and preparing, you know, to move out of critical degrees and move into new signs. Like there's a lot going on. And so... The whole mother wound in some way will be activated within the collective as we move through this weekend. Now, this is huge heart activations. OK, this is huge, huge heart activations. Happiness is a heart activation. Grief, sadness, pain is a heart activation. Uh, flutters in your heart, anxiety, feeling like you can't breathe, pain in your back, shoulder blade issues, neck stiffness, that all revolves around the heart chakra. Those types of physical symptoms will be popping off, especially more this weekend around that mother wound energy that gets activated in our lineage, in our DNA, in our ancestry, in our generational trauma, that will be a collective ascension symptom. So we are going to experience a lot of heart activations, especially coming into the week. What I would also say is that there, especially in the, the female physical body, there will likely be a lot of, I'm going to say, cramping or um, tremors or reverberatory signs and symptoms in the womb space, okay? Now, all of us, I don't care your biological makeup at all, all of us will be going through lower back pain. So again, maybe sciatica coming up, maybe the tailbone issue is coming back up again, maybe it's just uncomfortable to sit, feels like we have to kind of uh, snap our backs, crack our backs a little bit. There's a lot of tension in our hip space, in our lower back. And a lot of that is because we are 
Well, first of all, we are coming out of this eclipse season with that new moon in Taurus that's going to kind of, you know, jam all of the fragmented pieces of our energy back into our vessel. And then, you know, Jupiter moving into Taurus energy, that is a fixed Earth sign. We're really not going to know what to do when we first get into that particular energy. And I truly feel like it's going to feel like the world is spinning around us, yet we are unable to move. It is going to feel, uh, again, at the beginning of this particular transit, it is going to feel like we're in a state of paralysis, like we're literally frozen in time until we can adjust to these energies. And so our survival, okay, who it is that we are, our identity is changing, our circumstances get just got jolted, we are receiving new information and details that we have to kind of process. We're changing, you know, whether you like it or not, whether you've been resistant to it or going with the flow, it doesn't matter. Change is hard. Adjustment is hard. And every single time we make an adjustment, we have to gain our, our bearings back. And every single time we make an adjustment and then we gain our bearings, then we question where it is that we want to go from here. And then we choose where it is that we want to go from here and we take a step forward. And then we have to kind of like sit with it and reflect back and piece it all together and reevaluate again. But what I'm getting at here is that there's so much change that our survival patterns and behaviors in our physical body they are kind of popping up and we find those survival energies, they get stored in the root chakra, in our butt, in the base of our spine, so to speak. That's where the tailbone issues come up. That's where the sciatica comes up. That's where our hips kind of, you know, needing to be flexed and be opened up a little bit. That's where all that energy comes up. And, you know, it's a funny thing when you consider Mother's Day. Okay, well, Mother's Day means that you essentially created and gave birth and continued to nurture this little being into semi-adulthood of some sort. So, you know, that in itself is painful. I don't think people realize um, how painful the birthing process actually is and the everlasting signs and symptoms that stay in the physical body because of the process that the body goes through in order to actually give birth. And, you know, Gaia, Mother Earth herself, it is her day. She is our mother. She is our creator. She is our everything. And so the reverberatory effect that takes place when the majority of the collective is focused on one particular topic and theme that reverberates throughout the cosmos. And not only does it reverberate through our own individual vibration and frequency, it changes, it ascends us to the next level of consciousness because again, you are not the same person that you were a year ago. And as I've been able to kind of grow and heal through the process of my my relationship with my mother, every year I look at Mother's Day from a different set of eyes because I have new experiences. I have new perspectives. I have new understandings. And, you know, to kind of give you a little bit of insight for those of you that have been with me for a while, you knew that I made a major move. Back in December, I, I changed provinces and a lot of that was to be closer to my mother. Now, a lot of the reasoning of why that is, you know, a major impact for me is because I spent the majority of my childhood and even in my adolescent years and even in my early 20s running away from my mother running away from my family. I wanted just as much time, distance, and space between us as is all possible. But for those of you that have been with me, you would also know that I had seven major deaths take place over the course of the last year. Very, very close personal relationships that have forever altered who it is that I will be without the presence of these individuals in my life. And it took that much for me to say, you know what, we might have our problems, but at the end of the day, you need to be close to the people that you want to be close to and how important family actually is. And just the dynamics have changed so greatly for me, even over this past year, that now I find myself in a brand new province, in a brand new house, in a brand new environment, and this Mother's Day, I'm going to be looking at the Mother's Day wound from a different set of eyes because I'm no longer running away 
from my mother, running away from my family. If anything else, I have opened up and and had a realization that I, I need them closer, even if it's closer to, to, you know, grow through our growing pains and to whittle things out and to continue to work on our relationship dynamic. Um, a lot of things in my own personal life have changed and I know they've probably changed in your life as well. So what I'm getting at is that each and every year that we get under our belt exposes us to experience, to knowledge, to wisdom, to information that essentially changes the way that we look at things that we've done every year. We've celebrated Mother's Day every year how we feel about it, how we perceive it, the actions that we take to celebrate it or to avoid it in some cases will be forever changing because we are growing in our consciousness. So I want you to take a minute and I want you to just really kind of sit and be real and raw and vulnerable with yourself about the mother relationship or the mother role, whichever one kind of triggers and activates you. I want you to think very carefully on the primary root cause of those particular thought patterns and those emotions. And I want you to be really real and raw and vulnerable with yourself. If you've done all that you can to make peace within yourself or with the people that you feel like you need to make peace with, as far as these particular wounds go, Venus being in cancer energy is going to make us super sentimental, super nostalgic. Anyways, we are dealing with the inner child wound. We are dealing with the mother wound. We are dealing with the mother role wound as well. All of us. So if you're a man out there and you're saying, oh, well, none of this applies to me. I'm sorry, sir. But yes, it does. You have a mother. You came from a woman. You likely have women in your life giving life to other beings in your life, regardless Regardless of whether you have a close relationship or not, doesn't matter. You yourself have mother wounds within you. You have your mother's DNA in you. You are witness to mothers in the making and you have cancer energy in you. You have mothering energy in you. You have nurturing mothering energy in you. We all have it. We all have a certain potency when it comes to the wounds that have been passed down to us through our generational trauma. And all of that is in our DNA. The more we go through ascension, the more solar flares, the more CMEs, the more evolution that the planetary system is going through, the more light codes get activated in our physical bodies, which exposes us to more truth, more remembrance, more activation, more pain, more trauma, but more blessings, more rewards, more strengths. We often talk about, you know, just generational trauma. Well, you can have generational strengths too. We don't just have to, you know, be accepting the bad stuff in our lineage. Our ancestors were powerful beings. They were smart beings, very full of experience and wisdom. You can have all of that too. It's all being activated in our DNA. This is what the ascension process is all about. And so all I'm welcoming you to do is just, just sit with yourself, get real with yourself when thinking about the mother wound and how that has affected you and what that means to you and what you could do differently and compare it to last year and where it is that you're at and focus on all the changes and just see if there's just a fraction of change as far as healing those wounds or even acknowledging those wounds actually go. I know for myself, it's definitely going to be a different type of weekend, a different type of Mother's Day celebration. Um, again, kind of plucking yourself out of old circumstances in an old environment and putting yourself in a new one will definitely shake things up, wake you up, open your eyes to new perspectives. And I can only hope that everyone is leaning towards turning that pain into power as I plan on doing again this time around. So that's kind of the Mother's Day topic and theme that again, like I said, kind of moved into the Ascension symptoms for this week. Now, beside the ones that we just kind of talked about that I think are going to be a little bit more potent just this weekend because of the Mother's Day uh, celebration slash wound, um, we also have to consider the facts that time 
has been messed with yet again. I don't know if you all kind of feel like some days it's on fast forward and then all of a sudden the next day it's like time doesn't even move. We're going through these days where there's like a true acceleration of time and then all of a sudden time stops, time stands still. So from what I understand, um, this is an indicator that we are adopting the, I'm going to say, new time frame that the 5D will have us more immersed in than the 3D time frame that we're currently moving out of. What do I mean by that? Okay, so time, as you know, is a man-made construct anyways, and to a lot of us, just an illusion. However, we're still a part of this 3D experiment, which means that time does dictate um, you know, where we have to be, what we have to do, how long we have to do it, all of those lovely things. Well, we're moving out of a, I'm going to say, distorted and slower time clock, linear time clock, record keeping clock, than we are currently moving into. We get these accelerated days of time because there is an acceleration of energy that we are going to have to kind of adjust to, adapt to, and embody when we start kind of emerging in the 5D more so than we've been living in. Now, for many of us, we're on the bridge between the 4D and the 5D, right? 4D, 5D, not too many of us enjoy going back to that 3D. It's absolutely sickening. It's absolutely disgusting. But the vibrations and the frequencies need to do their natural, I'm going to say, weaning process, because this is a weaning process, of getting us stuck out of the stuck rut of the old and giving us little tastes, little windows of, of time, of this new acceleration of what time is actually going to be, even though still a man-made construct, even though it is, you know, they want us to believe that it's linear. It's not really that. We are going to be feeling gaps of time being lost. We are going to be feeling like, ooh, okay, that half hour went by in five minutes. We are going to be feeling an acceleration in time more so now than ever. The, I'm going to say the normalcy that we are moving into will be the acceleration time warp that we've only been kind of experiencing in little blips. Um, the split that has taken place in this eclipse season, I don't know if you noticed it at all, but there was a very pivotal point just over the past, I'm going to say week or so, um, the sun and Uranus definitely kind of having that conjunction showed us very clearly the split, the division, not only between people, not only between consciousness, not only between realities, not only between circumstances, but between time. Time has been whack over this past week, and it will continue to accelerate and kind of find that happy medium that the general population, the majority of the awakened collective is going to be comfortable being tempered into, if you will. So you can expect for one day just to fly by, not even know that, like, where did the time go? And then wake up and just have a day where, like, it doesn't seem like the, the time is moving at all. And we're going to have more days of fast forward time than we are going to be at a standstill time. But I want you to pay attention to kind of clocking for yourself where it is that you're at and what it is that you're living in uh, in the majority of time, because the split has split, essentially. And we're not really going back. We're just kind of edging our way very slowly but surely into this new normal, into this new circumstance, into this new realm, into this new reality. Um, so I want you to pay attention to time. And I think you're going to be, if, if you haven't already, I think you're just going to be bewildered uh, to realize that some days it goes by just like a snap of the fingers. And then other days, it just feels like it's never, ever going to end. Now, with this time warp, comes a level of awareness and consciousness that we are also edging into. So the aha moments, the epiphanies, they are going to become more rapid, closer together, more profound, especially since that sun and Uranus energy just popped off on the ninth. We are increasingly having more and more perspective shifts, more levels of consciousness be activated. 
we feel comfortable enough to lock in those levels of consciousness. And so we are starting to see that, wow, you could wake up thinking you're going to have a normal day, all of a sudden receive a text or a phone call with a perspective that makes you have to kind of go back to whenever that situation popped off with this new information and kind of reframe the experience in which you had. That is what I often refer to as rewriting the narrative, right? Reworking the story. Every single time that we reach a new level of awareness and we take that situation, that perception, that understanding, and we look back and we retrace our steps and we, you know, loop through certain memories with this new knowledge and perspective, it alters the way that not only we think, but the way that we feel. And when we change the vibration of the way that we think and the way that we feel, it alters this present moment, which again, alters the possibilities, the opportunities that are now available to us now that we are projecting ourselves into a path and moving forward. So the time warp and the epiphanies are happening all at once. And again, being in eclipse season is very disorienting. It's supposed to be so that we aren't fighting or resisting some of these changes where we're just kind of in this whirlwind of euphoria and we just don't know if we're coming or going. That needs to happen. But Here's what I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting at. I want you to be prepared for this. We've all just kind of been floating, right? Like just detached, just trying to go roll with the punches. Like we know that we're in wild card energy, but we really don't understand it. I want you to prepare for the impact that is going to feel like you hit a brick wall when we get closer to that new moon in Taurus, it literally jolts us like we hit a brick wall. And that is when the, all, all the fragments of self that we're currently experiencing through this eclipse and retrograde season, they're all over the place. They're just floating through time and space, like in a discombobulated state of being and existence. We hit this brick wall, all the pieces line up. We slide down the brick wall. We're going to have to sit in a curled up ball on the ground, this metaphorical ground that I'm speaking of, in order for us to get our bearings. And we're going to feel heavy. We're going to feel weighted. This is going to be a huge, huge adjustment. I want you to understand that not only the new moon in Taurus is closing the door on that eclipse energy and returning us to regular energetic programming, but it is, again, Taurus energy, physical body. It is putting all the pieces back into this physical body and it's not going to feel good. And here's why. Our soul self, okay, our energetic self, soul self, spirit, whatever your consciousness, whatever, however you want to think of it, has grown so greatly through this eclipse season, through this retrograde season, that when you take that energy and you try to fit it back into the physical vessel, it's going to be bigger than the vessel can actually hold, and this is where we're going to have a lot of the assumption ascension symptoms. We're going to feel like we gained 500 pounds overnight. We're going to feel like we can't lift our legs to make moves to walk forward. We're going to feel the achiness, the rigidity in our bones. And granted, it may come on. It may only last for a couple of hours or it could last for a day or it could last for three days. We don't know because it depends on how um, you're able to kind of move through the energetic purge that needs to happen when you realize the energy blockages that are manifesting these ascension symptoms. It's down to you. How quick are you able to process things? How quick are you able to get yourself out of a funk? How quick are you able to rewrite the narrative? How quick are you able to come up with solutions? All of that is active practice on how we dissipate and dissolve some of the ascension symptoms. So when they come on, Let's say, you know, they come on and it puts you down like you're going to have a coach day or you're going to have to stay in bed all day. And again, sometimes they can be super debilitating. So don't feel like, you know, you're a loser or you're a wine puss or whatever. Like if you need a rest day, rest is just as important as productivity. You have to know when to allow yourself to rest. But when you have these moments, you do have to be doing the inner work to say, okay, 
this is this what this is what my physical body is feeling. So this can connect to, you know, what chakra? Okay, so the chakra is connected to what organs? Okay, so the organs are holding this kind of energy. Well, what circumstances just popped off in order for me to feel this energy? What am I having a hard time letting go of? What am I having a hard time accepting? Where am I holding fear? When you start asking yourself these questions and doing the shadow work, cuz that's what it is, the inner uh, the inner rewriting of your conscious and unconscious programming. When you do that work, that is what alleviates the physical pain that you're feeling in your physical body due to the energetic blockages that are coming up and manifesting as physical symptoms due to the energetic processing that is needed for you to take control over in order to sort these things out. So the heaviness feeling like you're just shoved back into your body and you have no clue how all this energy is going to fit in having this rigidity needing to crack your 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 back your joints your bones needing to stretch it out not being able to turn your neck all the way to one side to the other these are common symptoms of energy blockages that you need to be processing in your inner realm to see where the energy is actually stemming from what memory what emotion what circumstance did this primary root cause actually get seeded in and what's going on in your physical realm right now to fester and aggravate these particular energies to be shook up again for them to actually come to the surface level of your awareness this is a lot of work and this is why we're exhausted all the time but having jupiter especially who magnifies the situation right just totally turns the volume up on the situation moving into a fixed earth sign my goodness we are going to feel the magnification of the heaviness of the weight of our physical bodies and any sign symptom ailment cluster effery discomfort that comes up in the physical body is going to be magnified. Why? Because we need to heal it. The Taurus energy needs us to take care of our physical selves. Okay. Yes, we have to take care of mind, body, and soul, but the Taurus energy needs us to concentrate on our physical body. The Taurus energy connects to the five senses of our physical body. All of our information receptors get encompassed in this physical form. It is super important that you do the work sorting the highs and lows of your emotional and mental state out when you are kind of faced with a lot of pain and discomfort popping up because of the energy fluctuations coming in. So this heaviness, this weight, this feeling like we're being shoved back in our body. No, it's not going to feel good. Hopefully it doesn't last that long. Hopefully you do the work in order to unleash those energetic blockages and patterns. But we can expect it to really kind of bring on a major shift of awareness in our physical bodies, what it is that we need to be working on and healing. And so with this heaviness, of course, once mercury goes direct, we're going to be feeling a shift in the pressure in our head. I don't think the congestion is going to go away. So many of us having sinus congestion or needing to kind of clear the throat, allergies popping off, stuffiness in one side over the other, um, ear clicking, ear popping one side over the other. All of that is due to the intense pressure in the head space and mercury rules over that. And we always need a little bit of a time to adjust when mercury comes out of our retrograde, goes direct. There's always a lot of pressure there. You could have a moving headache, that headache worm that we've previously talked about, just uh, illuminating different pressure points in your headspace. And again, always result back to the black hat, to the black hood, put a veil on your head of some sort. If the light coats are too much and the head pressure is too much, definitely put a headdress of some sort on. I don't think the congestion is going to go away. I think if anything else, it, it's going to become a little bit more pressurized, a little bit more magnified, if you will, especially with Mercury doing its thing. I feel like the throat chakra will be popping off. So maybe you have to clear your throat. Maybe you have swollen lymph nodes. Maybe you have a sore throat. Maybe your throat is itchy. Uh, regardless, the throat is opening up. Uh, Taurus energy, again, rules over 
kind of that particular area of the body. I get torn when we talk about um, the rulerships with energies because I think that all of the energies do have a dominant place in the body. Um, but the throat chakra is being activated because we have spent a fair amount of time uh, kind of pulling back especially through eclipse season and retrograde season, we've just been in observer mode. We've been trying to piece together what it is that we think and how it is that we feel and what it is that we want to do moving forward. But we haven't quite had the words within ourselves, let alone be able to articulate it and communicate it correctly outwardly. Now we're putting those pieces together and there is this agitation, this swelling, if you will, this urgency, this impulse in the throat in order to kind of speak our piece and get those words out. And because of that, we are going to be feeling the irritation, the agitation, uh, the attention be put on our throat chakra. Another reason why I think the throat is going to be such a thing, just playing back into this mother wound. Okay, so what happens when you're giving birth? Well, the mother is screaming and the child is screaming. And that scream is the sign of life. It's the sign of passion. It's the sign of anger, a sign of pain. We are the sound, okay? We talk about sounds, vibrations, frequencies. Sound is healing. Sound is also hurtful. It's the vibration and frequency of our energetic signature when we use our words and we speak. The tone of our voice has its own signature. And for many of us, not only because of this mother wound, not only because of the throat shock to activations, but when Mars, the god of war, rule, moves into this Leo energy, you best believe that we're all going to want to scream like we're doing a battle cry, like we are charging forward against our adversaries and we are ready to just do whatever has to be done in order to maintain the pride, okay? The, that Leo pride, that lion pride. We have to maintain the pride. We have to follow our heart. We have to follow our passion. We have to rise to our calling. And Mars, who hasn't been able to scream, to move, to assert himself, even an inch, literally dating back to this time it, last year in 2022, he has a lot that he wants to scream about, okay? Yes, the heart activations, again, come into play with the Leo energy because, you know, we are kind of being re-sparked, reignited, if you will, in that heart space, but the battle cry, that scream, you know, just needing to scream on the top of your lungs, that is going to be a huge impulse. And I really recommend that you do it. Okay. Who cares? Go out on your deck, scream out into the wilderness. If you need to, who cares who looks at you? If you want to, you know, bury your head in the pillow and suppress your own screams, your own voice, your own signature, you go right ahead. I am a full supporter of belting it out. Whether you're in the car or you're in the shower or you're just out on the deck, just giving a good scream, you got to get that energy out. I definitely encourage you to do it. Um, and I would make a date, like literally just make a date with yourself and say, okay, I'm not going to wait until I have a breakdown and want to scream. I'm going to make a date. I'm going out on Thursday and I'm going to scream and I don't care who looks at me. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to feel so much better. OK, but the battle cry, that screaming energy is coming up in the throat chakra, coming up in the heart space. And we definitely want to let it out. Now, coming back to kind of the, the throat a bit, our thirst is going to increase. I want you all stay hydrated. Now, I'm not even going to get into the hunger shift because many of us are so hungry and nauseous at the same time. There's no point talking about it. As I've mentioned, the digestive issues are likely going to be a long term ascension symptom that are changing from week to week. And that's just matter of fact. So I don't know how, you know, our, our cravings are definitely going to be changing, but mostly it's the thirst. It's the hydration that we need at this particular point in time. So keep the water to you. I also want to talk about the all the changes that we're going through. Now, we talked about the physical, environmental, circumstantial changes that we're going through. Have you given yourself a little moment in the mirror as of late? How many of you have noticed that your eye color has changed? How many of you have noticed that maybe your freckle pattern has changed? Maybe you have some sunspots. What I'm getting at is that our visual face is changing. Our visual image is changing. And because we've been doing so much work on ourselves, either consciously or unconsciously, doesn't even matter at this point, we are now starting to see the physical modification 
of the cellular vibration and frequency that we are now vibrating at. This is going to change the way that you look. You may not even recognize yourself in the mirror when passing by. I want you to make a date with yourself to give yourself a solid three minutes to look at yourself straight in the eyes in the mirror. And I want you to reconnect with your soul space because we've gone through such a metamorphosis that I think we have to get to a point where we're reintroducing ourselves to ourselves, our 3D vessel at least. And so I want you to drop me a comments in, in I want I want you to drop me a line in the comments below. I want to know if you see yourself differently, if your physical features are changing, if you notice a discoloration uh, pattern going on in your skin, if you've noticed a color change in your eyes, in your hair, in your freckles. I want to know what has been the major physical change that you have noticed that you didn't go out of your way to actually create within yourself. So we're just talking naturally and organic changes. So if you went out, you dyed your hair, I'm not talking about that. If you went out and you got, you know, tattooed eyebrows, we're not talking about that. If you change the contact color lenses for your eyes, we're not talking about that. I wanna talk about the actual, natural, organic evolution of your image. I want to know about it because this is where we're moving into, especially, you know, once we close the door on eclipse season and retrograde season, man, there is going to be a brand new world out there that requires a brand new you. And that transformation, that metaphor morphosis is starting now. Okay. I want you to be very cautiously aware of your energy, uh, especially of your blood pressure, especially when Mars moves into Leo energy. I want you to pay attention to your anger, to your agitation. Those are all good indicators on where a little bit more routine, di discipline, safety, security is needed, where agitation is leading you to make some changes in order to create calmness, peace, and harmony in your lives. Now, we talk about itchiness a lot because itching, of course, is an indicator of healing. I want you to pay attention to your palms, itchy palms. It's a very good sign for money, by the way, but itchy palms or palm chakras, as you may know, been taking a hit over the last little bit, trying to get these babies activated once again. We've been struggling with wounds on our fingers, on our nails, on our hands, jamming our hands and doors and having all kinds of weird little accident with our hands. And those were good indicators of the energy blockages taking place in our palm chakras. Now we are healing them. They are going to be getting itchy. We will also be having itchy ears. Okay, so this is a good indicator that our circumstances have also changed. Our reception, our auditory reception, changing ears, our physical touch, our physical environment, physical circumstances, changing palms. And I also want you to pay attention to the itchy spot that will come out of nowhere and absolutely drive you nuts on your neck the base of your head, where your head meets your spine, that little bump, that neck, uh, you're going to not even notice how your hand just automatically goes and scratches an inscratchable spot on your neck. That's a very good indicator that we have new juju moving through our spinal column, our spinal fluid. That is a good sign. Itchiness is a good sign. It is a healing sign. Many of us have struggled with neck problems, stiffness over the last little bit. That was an energy blockage all in itself. Now we're shifting into itchiness. Let me know when it happens to you because it's absolutely just, it's happy, it's celebratory, but it's also annoying as F because it's just a scratch that we don't seem to be able to actually scratch. Okay, guys, I think that's it. I'm looking through my notes here. I actually like, you know, didn't freestyle it like I did last week. Although thank you so much for the love. Y'all are just so sweet. Um, being able to say that I, I did a really good job of just opening my mouth and speaking whatever came out of it. I do prefer notes. I do prefer to make sure that I am covering some of the things that I think are going to be very important. And just scanning through, I think that I've covered the majority of what it is that I wanted to cover. So with that, that's what I'm going to leave you with. I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining me in the chat, for dropping a line in the comments, for reaching out and conversating or conversing, I should say, with other people. This is a beautiful 
community. And I love seeing the connections that are made. I love seeing you all in the chat, excited to see like, oh, hey, you're here this week or hey, how you doing? Like you all have conversations that don't even involve me. And I think that's a very beautiful thing. And I want to encourage you to keep doing that because we are all here for each other to remind each other that we are not alone and that we are not cray cray. And if we are cray cray, we're all going to be cray cray together on the crazy train that we are currently riding into this very wild roller coaster, topsy turvy life. So I want to thank you for being here. I'm sending you nothing but love. I hope you have a beautiful week and we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>